Good Saturday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, just past the 9 o'clock hours. You can see by the clock in the red bar up there on the top of the screen, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Things are decently quiet for this evening. We again have little, if anything, in the way of major problems for right now. We may see the possibility of some more showers and thunderstorms as we get into very early tomorrow morning, especially as we get into and around the area of tomorrow about dawn patrol and afterwards. So if you're heading up or church or Sunday school in the morning. There could be, again, the possibility of a few more scattered showers and quite possibly a couple thunderstorms in there as well. We're not seeing, again, a lot of activity at this point, so that's good news, but we may see, again, uh, the potential for more activity throughout the rest of the morning and into the afternoon as we get into the uh, later days as a new area of cold front and low pressure area pass us back to the north of us. So as of right now, again, what we've got is very calm conditions at this point. Should be, again, pretty quiet conditions for right now, but again, that could change as we get into very early tomorrow morning. We are currently live again for downtown. This is our exclusive video weather blog called Weather Overtime. If you've never tuned in here before, forecast in the blue bar, social media in the red bar up there and over there. Uh, if you'd like to know a little bit more about what's going on here, feel free to email me the blue bar below uh, the clock and above my head up there in the cell phone thingy, austin.onic at wrag.com. Uh, thanks to everybody for joining us on Facebook, Periscope, and Instagram. I promise I will do my best not to knock over the microphone, which I did, I think, about 42 times earlier this morning, so I apologize about that. We don't have any rainfall in the area as of right now, and doubtful we're going to be seeing too much of anything out there uh, throughout the rest of the evening. Currently on radar, we've got, again, very light amounts of moisture just kind of hanging in the atmosphere. Now, far back to our north and west, we do have, again, a decent amount of showers and thunderstorms taking place around the Kansas City area. Area, Sedalia back toward again White Plains and just outside of Columbia and Jefferson City, Missouri. Got some pretty good thunderstorms taking place. Sedalia getting some pretty heavy thunderstorms, severe thunderstorm warnings taking place at this time into and around the area of central Missouri. So for my family in and around Jeff City, Missouri, this is going to be knocking on your doorstep relatively soon as it gets a little bit closer to you. But in the meantime, there's really little, if anything, going on directly where we are at this point in time. Uh, for my mom and dad back in Topeka, Kansas, you've got a few leftover showers taking place. But outside of that, really just not that much going to be seen across the area for the uh, rest of the evening. Now, more chances of showers and thunderstorms like this could be showing up uh, directly in the Mid-South as we get into and around later on tonight. Not detecting anything in Little Rock at this point in time and really just not seeing that much uh, in and around the area north of us around Paducah either. We could see some scattered showers develop overnight into these areas, but so far we're just not looking at anything happening and that also goes again for the Mid-South area for right now. We'll be watching overnight to see if anything happens, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3 and we'll keep you updated on what may be heading our direction into tomorrow morning. Let's take a spin around the Mid-South and show you more about what's going on out there. Currently out there, we've got, again, some very toasty temperatures. We've got numbers about 80 degrees at City Hall in Germantown, 81 at St. Agnes, St. Dominic in Memphis. All of these on the WeatherNet system. If you'd like to know more, go to wrag.com slash weatherbug for more information about this. 82 at U of M Earth Sciences. Welcome to everybody joining us on Periscope and Twitter and also now on Facebook. Marsha Couples from West Memphis, Bozo Wilson. Folk tuning in as usual from Senatobia. Good evening to you as well. 82 this evening at Memphis International Airport. So we are seeing again some very warm conditions across much of the Mid South area and going to continue to see that throughout the rest of the evening tonight before that cold front gets there. Temperatures out there again, a number of stations out across the Mid South back into around the upper 70s to lower 80s just past 9 o'clock in the evening. So we've seen again some very cold temperatures nowhere near the Mid South area. It feels very much like August should be feeling at this time, and Shelby County at this point, again, back to 81 degrees now at Memphis International Airport. This from the Enhanced Data Display. You can get this by going to preview.weather.gov slash edd. I'll post more about that in the comments section if anybody would like to know more. Burn bans in the Mid-South area. We have nothing showing up for the Mid-South in Mississippi. Nothing has been issued by the Mississippi Forestry Commission here. The only burn ban that's really in effect is for Cross County in the News Channel 3 viewing area, and that's it. Numerous other counties remain under burn bans and will do so until further notice. Over 20 
counties at this time in Arkansas under burn bans as we see again some very good conditions out there. Wildfire danger in the area has been raised too high especially in the Orange counties in the southwestern part of the state from Yell and Scott County down toward Union, Columbia, Lafayette and Miller counties along the Louisiana-Texas state lines. That's where the worst of the worst activity could be, and that's in Arkansas. Now, burn bans, again, means that everything is off, is basically off limits, and you need to have a permit or check in with your fire department. Now, contained stuff in like a fire pit or a barbecue pit it can be allowable, but under conditions like this, you really need to check first to make certain that you are not in violation of the law or you start burning burning down your neighbor's house. It's really not a good idea uh, to make certain you burn something without checking it. Likewise, in Tennessee, it is fire season as of tomorrow, the beginning of the burn permit season. Uh, anything from October 15th through May 15th, that's the driest conditions in Tennessee. If you'd like to know more about when you need a burn permit, if you need one, how to contact the right people to ask the questions about what burning permits are all about, or how to protect your home and property against wildfire, burn safe TN. Dot org is going to be one of your best things uh, to take a look at. Bart Thompson, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Kimberly Fryer from Lamar, Mississippi. Jessica Brain Holt from South Haven. Thanks for joining us. Senatobia, Maryland Pang. Mary Jewell from South Fulton, Tennessee. Uh, Bozo Woolfolk, is Senatobia going to get any rain anytime soon? We'll take a look at that answer and question in just a little bit. Uh, so stay tuned for more there. We do have an area of disturbance out into the Atlantic. It is just to the east of Puerto Rico. Really great news for Puerto Rico again with this thing developing out there. But the good news at this time is that this particular system is going to be curving north and maybe making its way in the next about 24 to 48 hours away from the area and heading up into the western Atlantic, avoiding the Bahamas and hopefully skirting between there and Bermuda. Now that's the best of all possible scenarios that this model can come up with. We'll continue to monitor that, but Puerto Rico may be getting another lashing of rainfall pretty soon. Ophelia went to a Category 3 hurricane briefly for today and is still on track to hit Ireland and Scotland in the next couple of days as a post-tropical storm. It still looks like it's going to have the characteristics of a tropical storm, even as a hurricane, by Monday in southwest Ireland. So there could be some damage, some delays in travel if you're going to be heading in that general direction. So please keep that in mind as Ophelia runs out of power but still maintains its strength by just a little bit and that could cause some problems uh, into and around the Mid-South or into and around areas of uh, Ireland and the British Isles and the North Sea. That could uh, cause some delays out there, so please keep that in mind. Rest of the area, not seeing a lot of problems out there. Again, dust from off the Sahara in the yellow and white is blocking any possibility of any hurricanes really starting to redevelop out there, so definitely good news where that's concerned, but of course Ophelia is starting to diminish by just a little bit, and that dust is making its way all the way across the Atlantic into the Caribbean and that's what's helping to keep that one storm system from redeveloping into too much of anything else. Here's what it looks like on the satellite picture. Again, winds coming in from out of the south, as you can see, with those winds diminishing tonight. We're not going to see too much of a breezy condition, but there's plenty of moisture out there for cloud cover. There's our cold front stretching in and across portions of Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, that large line of clouds right there, thunderstorms, and some of them have been strong to severe out that direction. Now this front is expecting to be making its way through the Mid-South as we get into tomorrow. High pressure back to our east has done a very good job of kind of impeding the progress of the storm, so it's not going too far too fast at this point in time. Now by tomorrow morning, that front gets a little bit closer to the Mid-South and we see better chances of rainfall coming our way by early tomorrow morning. By noon, the front has passed the area. The winds switch out of the northwest and start bringing in very dry air from parts of central Canada and the upper Midwest. That'll help us out a lot. And by dinner time tomorrow night, everything is basically over and done with as that front makes its way out of the picture. By Monday morning, high pressure with very cold air is back in control over much of the area, and that does a very good job of keeping the temperatures down as we head into the next few days. So Jennifer Eubank Riddinger, 
Reidinger, hope I'm saying that correctly, from Brighton. Uh, six o'clock in the morning, yes, we could see some scattered light showers, and in that red hatched area that you see there, that's where we could see, again, some also some thunderstorms along that front as it moves its way on through. Now, the good news is we're not looking at anything in the way of severe weather, so good news on that. Low temperatures tonight, again, not all that low with those winds out of the south, and we'll be staying out of the south throughout the rest of the evening. We'll be keeping the temperatures up overnight, so lows will only be in the upper 60s to lower 70s. Now, temperatures tomorrow should be pretty interesting. 60s to 70s by around News Channel 3 daybreak. By the time we hit 10 o'clock in the morning, temperatures will be back in the upper 60s to lower 70s, pushing 80 degrees by 1 o'clock in the afternoon, but down by Tupelo. But for the rest of the area, as the winds begin to switch out of the south as we go into the early part of the day, then notice the winds start to turn around from the opposite direction. Instead of southeast, we'll be getting northwest winds, and that's going to take over throughout the rest of the day. As we see those winds bring in that colder air across the area, we'll see chances of rainfall for everybody into and around um, the area tomorrow, including some possible rumbles of thunder. Uh, Felicia Wright, welcome from Ashland. Thanks for joining us here. P-Dub Wyndham, a little wind therapy on the way to church. I think we can probably do that for you, but it looks like the wind shift is going to be coming through probably about late morning into early during the afternoon, and that'll be the best opportunity for picking up some fairly nice windy conditions out there. Now, tomorrow night, low temperatures by Monday morning, lower to mid 40s across much of the area, including the rain diminishing moving away from us down to the southeast by News Channel 3 at 5.30 tomorrow. And then by midnight, everything's basically all gone, and temperatures will be cooler by News Channel 3 at 10. We could see some lower 50s out there. And by early Monday morning, temperatures at the bus stop could be in the lower 40s for a lot of the Mid-South area, and that means some fairly cool conditions out there for the kids riding the bus, so something to think about. Now, this is kind of interesting, albeit kind of disappointing as well. The Climate Prediction Center on their 8 to 14 day temperature outlook is showing above normal temperatures over the next several days, which means that once we switch over out of this cool spate that we're going to have in the next about two days to Monday into Tuesday, it looks like it's going to be very much on the warmer side for the better part of the rest of the month. It does not look like we're going to be seeing much of any fall temperatures out there. Now, this can and often does change, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3. This is temperature. This is precipitation. The green indicates an above normal chance of rainfall, below normal in the brown colors, and unfortunately right into the area around the west coast where they need the rainfall. We're not seeing it, so it would be nice to see more of that out there. So we could see some more rain into the end of the month, and November is typically one of the rainier months of the year, so hopefully that'll help us out a little bit, but not good news where the temperature is concerned out there. Don't forget to sign up and become a Skywarn spotter. We need your help. We need you to become a Skywarn spotter and to learn what to look for when severe weather hits, and this is a great way to learn all about it. All you have to do is attend the sessions. It's totally free. It's paid for by your tax dollars and my tax dollars one of the best ways our tax dollars have ever been spent, in my not-so-humble opinion. And this is a great way to learn about what to do when severe weather hits across portions of the area. Uh, Deidre Jackson, 11, thanks for joining us on Periscope. Looking for rain in Lafayette County, Mississippi. You probably should be able to see uh, more about that coming up tomorrow evening. So hopefully a little bit more in the way of rainfall for northern Mississippi tomorrow as well. There's plenty of meetings coming up in the next several weeks, ending November the 7th in Arkansas, Tennessee, and northern Mississippi. Mississippi. Nothing in effect, uh, nothing being posted for Memphis. That one will be taking place usually about late February, early March. This is for the second severe weather season of the year. This is for, again, October, November, and December. When the patterns of the season change, we can get some pretty nasty storms that come through here during this time of the year. And that's why it's very important to know what to do, what to look for before this stuff happens. So definitely want to keep it tuned to News Channel 3. Please consider becoming a volunteer Skywarn spotter. All you have to do is use your eyes, your ears, and your brains, and your cell phone, or your ham radio if you have one, and that's all you need out there. It's one of the best things you can possibly do to help out your community when severe weather hits, so please keep that in mind. Again, drop by my Facebook page for more information, facebook.com slash austinonicwreg, on Twitter at twitter.com slash aonic underscore wreg3, and on Instagram, available at aonic no underscore necessary wreg3 with sunset, sunrise pictures, and if you have pictures out there, we'd 
love to see them, so please drop them by and let us know more about what you'll be able to look at. Seven-day forecast available at WREG.com slash weather. And if you can't get the computer or the TV going, listen on the radio, tune in on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations, and we'll be glad to have you along for the ride there. Alex Coleman will have more on the news tonight at 10. Mike Sadie has a very busy day in sports, and of course yours truly will have more information about the complete forecast as we get into the rest of the weekend. That's all coming up tonight at 10 on News Channel 3, and then join myself and Nina Harrelson for Daybreak on Sunday. More information coming up and keeping you updated there across the Mid-South where it comes to information, weather, sports, and everything going on across the Mid-South area. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, I'm meteorologist Austin Onuk. Thanks for joining us for the late edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime, and more tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. <laughs>